Anyway, my parents were always quarreling, and I would be the scapegoat of those quarrels. At the age of 14, I ran away from home. My mother found out where I was at, came and got me, had me placed in the jail in Hannibal, which I escaped from. It was extremely cold weather, and a short time later, I burglarized a country store for some clothes, which I was caught the next day by the store owner with all the clothes on. My mother asked the court to send me to the reformatory, which they did for a term of three years. All the prisons I've been in, that was the worst. I still have scars on my body from the whippings I received there. Anyway, I was paroled after a year. I was then 16 years old. Gideon isn't black, he's not illiterate, and he certainly isn't insane. The judge was not only not prejudiced against him, he even tried to help Gideon defend himself. Didn't do a very good job, but then it wasn't his role to be counsel for the defense. Which all makes this the perfect case with which to challenge the Betts decision. No special circumstances, just... Gideon's entitled to be provided with a lawyer because he's charged with a crime. Same way anyone in the country charged with a crime ought to be entitled to a lawyer. And that's how we'll argue the case. What I'd like to say to the justices is, let's not talk. Let's go down there and watch one of these fellows try to defend himself. Sorry I could not write any better. I have done the best I could. I right, set it up, set it up. Let's go. Go in, go in. Yeah, that's it. Bring it up, Rose. Bring it up, Rosie. Sorry, guys. Coaching is fine. Regardless, no. our community is worth it. Pass it. Maybe you wouldn't mind if I could speak to you sometime about my trial. Sure. It, 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 it happened a long time ago. That's it. That's it. Let's go. I mean, I don't remember all the finer points. Today, at the work. Yeah? If I win my case, they have to let me out. What do you mean? Could they put me on trial for the same thing again, this time with a lawyer? I don't know. What are you going to do if you win? First, I'm going to have to stand trial again. Same charge. This time with a lawyer. You mean I can do that? I don't know. I'm studying up on it now. Bastards. <clears throat> I gotta fight welfare for my kids. I gotta let her go into court, try to take them away from me. Well, I got news for welfare. They got no idea who they're fooling around with. And when they're heading in a home where I can take care of them or get myself a 
automobile maintenance job or something. Uh, open up my own shop. Just work on one car at a time. He was arguing for the state of Florida. Name's Jacob. You know what I find interesting? In the ordinary criminal case, the state has all the advantages. But now, in the Supreme Court, Gideon has Ape Fortis on his side. Plus you, plus me. The state of Florida has a young assistant attorney general who's probably never set foot in this room before. This once, things evened out. Don't go feeling sorry for the son of a bitch until we win. The Honorable, the Chief Justice, and the Associate Justices of the Supreme Court of the United States. Oyez, 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 all persons having business before the Honorable, the Supreme Court of the United States, are admonished to draw near and give their attention, for the court is now sitting. God save the United States and this Honorable Court. Number 155, Clarence Earl Gideon, petitioner versus H.G. Cochran, Jr., Director, Division of Corrections, State of Florida. Counsel are present. Mr. Bordas. Mr. Chief Justice, may it please the court. This case presents a narrow question unencumbered by extraneous issues. Clarence Earl Gideon is supposed to have broken into the Bay Harbor pool room and stolen some wine, some cigarettes, and an unstated amount of money. He was arrested and put on trial. He asked the judge to appoint an attorney to defend him, and the judge refused. Thereupon, Gideon did the best he could to defend himself. He was convicted, sent to the penitentiary for five years. The record does not indicate that Gideon was a person of low intelligence, nor that the judge was unfair to him. But to me, this case shows the basic difficulty of Betts versus Brady. It shows that no man, however intelligent, can adequately conduct his own defense. That's not the point, is it, Mr. Fortas? In the Betts case, this court did not go on the assumption that a man can do as well without an attorney as he can with one, did it? Everyone knows that isn't so. I entirely agree, Mr. Justice, with the point you are making, namely that a man cannot have a fair trial without a lawyer. But the Betts case held that this consideration was outweighed by the demands of federalism. In other words, the Betts case expressed the feeling that this court had at the time, that the state of Florida or any state should have the right to decide for itself whether defendants in their courts should be entitled to counsel. The Supreme Court of the United States should not impose that requirement upon them. But, Mr. Justice, this court has held many times that when there are special circumstances, a defendant is entitled to counsel in the state courts I have now read all the cases on right to counsel questions, beginning with the famous case of the Scottsboro Boys in 1932, and it is a fascinating inquiry. As I read the opinions of this court, I hope I may be forgiven for saying that my heart was full of compassion for the judges having to review those records and look for special circumstances which might entitle a defendant to counsel. Such case-by-case -case supervision of the state courts by the Supreme Court cannot be wholesome. Intervention should be in the least abrasive, least corrosive way possible. Of course, this uh, special circumstance approach is wrong. How can a trial judge, when a man is arraigned, look at him and say there are special circumstances? 
Does the judge say you look stupid or your case involves complicated facts? It is administrative